Hello, and my name is Michael Sandoval, and welcome to another episode of Peers Over Beers. Hello, Chris. Hello, how's it going? I'm doing well, thank you very much. So this is our, I guess, our special um, kind of hunkered down version of the uh, Peers Over Beers special. We are doing it completely virtual, so we're doing a very good kind of social distancing. So Chris is a few miles Exactly. And we have a special guest with us, uh, Matt Meacham. Meacham, is that correct? That's you actually you pronounce that perfectly, and uh, very rarely does that happen. Oh, because they probably call you Meckham or something like that. That's it. Meckham is. <laughs> oh yeah. my god! <laughs> I've had that all Matt. my life. <laughs> <laughs> I would Matt, say uh, it's, it's funny. But I would tell you, uh, Matt, and I got to say this because Michael is very good at language, so he knows three or four different uh, languages, and so uh, he's very good at uh, seeing kind of the you know, where you're from and everything else and the uh, pronunciations and stuff like that. It's kind of crazy. It, it's, it's a, it's a uh, interesting uh, bar trick, as I like to say. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, so speaking about social distancing, Matt, you're uh, visiting us all the way from uh, uh, across the pond from London. As I said earlier, we were uh, chatting about how, how uh, I enjoy your Texas accent. Yeah. yeah the, uh, it took a few years to develop. Um, (laughs) (laughs) yeah I'm over in the UK um, so I think social distancing wise we're about as far away as we could possibly get Um, but here we are with technology together so that's kind of cool yeah it is kind of cool well Matt uh, thank you very much for joining us Uh, so tell us a little bit about yourself as you'll you'll introduce yourself and then we'll kind of walk in All right, sounds good well uh, my name is Matt Meacham and I am the uh, development director for a community platform called InVision Community and it's been a platform we launched way back in the dark ages, uh, before Facebook, before Twitter and YouTube in 2002. Um, and we have been through a few kind of pivots over the last 18 years. Um, and we now serve um, a lot of brands with their community. Um, we do a lot of um, brand-based communities for them, and uh, which is why I'm here. Ah, that's great. So just hearing that intro, I already have a a ton of questions. <laughs> <laughs> I do too. <laughs> that's, so, that's a good, go on. Yeah, no, no, it's, it's, it's a great stuff. So, uh, you know, like my first one that comes in that before Facebook, oh, you're right. That was the dark ages. What, what, what made you, uh, you know, one of the things we like to say all the time is that we, we kind of came into the business or at least in this uh, career, almost, I wouldn't maybe by accident. I mean, you kind of struck, you kind of stumble upon it, but then you start to see, uh, it's value and you just want to help others. And we just kind of become this jack of all trades in some way, but you clearly are, have the jack of all trades because you started it, been in it, and then started your own business as a result. I mean, how did you, uh, what was it at the beginning that, uh, kind of, kind of put you in this path? Well, I think, I think, uh, I mean, I stumbled on this, um, career too. Um, I wish I could tell you I had a master plan. Um, but I, I didn't, <laughs> um, it was way back in like the early days of the internet. And, um, some of your older listeners will remember the fun we used to have with dial up and modems and I AOL. still have that lovely sound. <laughs> I still, I still have a fear of the phone bill. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, I mean the roots of it started in a, in another product. I had a, a website, I was into, um, art. Um, I studied art at, um, college and, Graphic design was my career, and I figured that was where I would go with my life. Mm. Um, but I kind of got into like digital art, and I, I had a, I've always had a fondness for programming. Uh, ever since I was a kid, I had some of the really, really primitive computers without hard drives and floppy drives, and I used to spend weekends coding on it, um, which may be really popular with the girls, obviously. No, 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 I totally, <laughs> totally get it. I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> uh, well, uh, Google, Google BBC Microcomputer. It was an initiative um, that the Brits set up. To in the eighties to get kids coding and to create a generation of coders. Ah, oh, that's interesting. Well, they've got one at least, so it, it worked out. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the the investment was worth it. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure my tax dollars have really paid back the uh, <laughs> the outlay. But <laughs> <laughs> that's it, funny. It, it, uh, so I, I've already I've always had a, a keen interest in programming, and um, I kind of had this uh, so pompous, but I had all my artwork online. I figured it would be kind of cool if I could get people to tell me what they liked and what they didn't like um and i was also a gamer a bit of a, a bit of a closet gamer and i was into quake 3 and uh, a highlight of my life was joining a clan mm. uh, and they had a message board 
uh, uh, probably one that doesn't no longer exists anymore. Um, they had a message board to coordinate games and so on. So I kind of um, had this idea about a, ga- a gallery and allowing people to leave reviews, and I started coding it, and then realized I had 80% of um, a message board system done. So I kind of pivoted um, into that, lent into it, um, and I just one night I just stuck it up for download, see if anyone else could could make use of it, um, mm. and they didn't. Here we are. I'll be damned. That's pretty cool. So, what have you? Uh, I, I mean, you've 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 been in the business for a bit. Uh, what is what do you think is uh, really been a big change that you've seen, uh, kind of as the course of your career? Well, which decade? <laughs> yeah. No. Fair point. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think I think right at the beginning. Um, I think at the beginning, it was a really great time, actually. And I'm sounding like one of those old men in bars, you know, back in my day. <laughs> um, we had but, a code for our own food. Yeah, right. <laughs> you, that's, that's not even that's not even a joke. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, back in the back in the dark, the dark days of the Internet, there was this kind of really fun, fertile ground for kind of create creativity. Um, and long before we had QA testers and formal release schedules and GitHub, you know, I literally would have an idea for something while I was at work, finish work, come home, log onto my computer, which could take an hour or two, depending on how busy AOL was, code it up, release it, that, release it that night and be good. So it was kind of a really exciting time. Um, and most stuff was free. Um, you know, it was very, very hard to monetize anything. Um, I mean, Napster tried. <laughs> Um, so, and it kind of grew from there. We, we kind of got an audience from that. I um, mean, there were two or three, um, products at the time were very popular and I think we just kind of elbowed, elbowed our way in, um, and, and kind of stuck with it. And the big, tra- the first big transition we had was taking what was a free product and it was, we never open sourced it. We always had it under a proprietary license. Mm-hmm. Um, but, um, the big, biggest challenge we had was trying to find a way to monetize it because we sat down uh with my business partners um and we were, we were like well what are we going to do with this because we all have jobs you know we all have credit card debt trying to keep the servers up you know we either need to pack it in and and focus on our jobs or we we can sort of transition to paid and try and make some money out of this um to support our our um you know <laughs> support our food <laughs> right uh so we we went for that option we figured well you know why not go for it um, so that was a challenge because once you give something for free, trying to ask the audience if they wouldn't mind paying for it on, you know, is always a challenge. Mm. Uh, and we made a, um, a few friends and a few enemies at that time, but we felt it was, it was just necessary. You know, we, we couldn't go on offering it for free. Um, so, you know, yeah, that no, would... and that was, that was a unique time. Cause I know this uh, moment in time when there was a lot of free stuff, right. And, and, and in fact, from a community perspective, that's what kind of drove the community, right? Because everybody was helping each other and, uh, you know, here, let me give you this. Uh, oh, I'll use that. And it became this uh, unique, um, you know, like building blocks of each other, right? Exactly. Uh, yeah. It's very, very cooperative. Yeah. But then you're right. It, you do come to the point where like, hey, I think this can be a viable business uh, because there is growth, right? Because that's the other thing too, I think about it, you know, Chris and I talk about this too online about there was seemed like to be an inflection point, um, uh, especially in some of the large businesses. Uh, you know, it, and I, it'd be curious about your kind of your journey as well. But from a B two C perspective, it kind of happened earlier. I think it's, you know, this is a whole you know pets dot com era. But I think for B two B, it's happening. It happened like ten years later, or maybe I'm sorry, maybe seven years or five years later, like early two thousands, maybe two thousand three, uh, where there was another inflection point where businesses started to see value in you know expanding their support and it could be in the rise of china because i know that's where at least my experience is what my experience was in how do you support so many people with such a limited support staff right and you kind of look towards your own uh customers right that to help through yeah ex- exactly that i mean you know the the inflection point the sort of the point where we decided we needed to make a decision was, you know, we just, you know, I was working from nine to five, coming home uh, as before I had, you know, before I met my wife and had a family. So it was, I had a lot more time, but I was still working on, you know, this project till three in the morning, trying to get three or four hours sleep. It's just like, this is not sustainable. We need to figure it out. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think we came into it just after the sort of very first dot-com bubble. Um, I actually sold my first 
um, project to a company in return for stock, <laughs> which, which was a bad idea. Just uh, <laughs> if, if if anyone invents a time machine, learn. that's going to be stop number one. Don't do that. <laughs> um, I, I still have the certificate, and the paper is worth more than the printing on top. So. <laughs> Ah, uh, but 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 look at the bright side. Such a lovely picture to put on the wall. Exactly. Yeah, I do. I do still have it. Yeah, it's a good memory. It's yes, a good memory. I, I, as, a, as you pass by it, and tears of blood come from your eyes. <laughs> I'm over it now. It's been like oh, good. good. <laughs> it's, it's it's been twenty years. A therapy's oh, helped. A the therapy's helped. Good. <laughs> I, I bet you've never done that again. So not since no. And actually, funnily, that's been a conscious decision we've had um, because again, back in the early two thousands, it was like if you had a half decent product. Google would just buy it, just shower you with millions and you could retire. Yeah. So we were, we were kind of, we had another conversation. We have a lot of conversations, but we, we were like, do we want to be the company that, that, that builds and grows and, and, and employs more people and is around for a long time? Or do we want to just be showy for and, and hope that someone buys us or to attract VC funding? And we made a conscious decision based on our experience before that we wanted to kind of grow it organically and we wanted to be in it for the long term more than just a short term. Um, thing to sell so that's been quite a conscious thing too oh that's great it's almost the proverbial do not be evil as, as uh, ah, google yeah, likes to flick him himself yeah absolutely yeah that's, that's, that's i mean it is, it, i'm sure it's hard to turn down millions of dollars though so you know you can't it's hard for me to fault others for just saying you know what here it is here's 10 million dollars or we'll take the 10 million dollars goodbye or however much right especially billions of dollars nowadays being spent yeah, I, I, I would like to think I'm virtuous, but no, you're right. I would have taken the money and run. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, sorry, everyone. <laughs> yeah, no, but it, it it does set a path, right? And it does it does create a, a structure and form. But, so here we are today. You know, uh, your business, right? Where you, where you are and 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 the activities you do. Uh, you know, where do you focus on today? What's your your key uh, areas that you uh, uh, that you attack? Well, it's now. Um, brand-based communities you know um it's no secret that facebook and social media has eaten a lot of what used to be the forum market um yep. you know back in the day we we had downloadable licenses that you could you know you could buy for a uh, like hundred dollars or whatever and that was the only money you could you could get from that sale and you could do support and renewals on top of the income was quite low from that um but that market has largely gone um you know that's fine social media facebook facebook groups do a great job of, of what they do um but w when you get into sort of bigger communities or, or you want more sort of bespoke look and feel and functionality um that's kind of where we come in now um we, we work with a lot of big brands we've we've done communities for lego and sega and squarespace um, which is really exciting you know we really really love digging into those projects yeah those are fun uh, at least uh, you know Doing a communities myself, I used to love to get into all the business process and understand how people communicate. And it's this social piece of how an organization runs is the fun part, you know. Yeah, no, cool. I, I genuinely have a passion for it. And it sounds so <laughs> it's like such 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 a soundbite, but I really do. I do. I really really enjoy what I do. Yeah, I don't worry. I think you're preaching to the choir, as we say here in the states. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. So uh, you talk about uh, this. So. One of the subjects we get constantly asked about is uh, vendor selection, right? Um, mm -hmm. And so here, you know, we have our thoughts, right? And we definitely can tell you our thoughts. But, uh, you know, how I can do tell you... tell you my thoughts, I'm <laughs> sure. <laughs> no, I mean, it's not bad. I, no, I, it's not bad either. I, yeah, I agree. I have tons of questions about, you know, where um, uh, vendors are going, specifically community vendors. And, you know, should should vendors be more like... I'm not saying like Facebook, but if you look at kind of the trends of this social piece, right? What, what is, uh, uh, how are people engaging? How are people interacting? You know, and and so, you know, platforms today, in in some cases, and I don't know uh, about yours just because I haven't used it, but um, you know, are are struggling to, um, you know, build engagement type stuff. You know, and and we can get into that later, but you, you can answer his question. But I'm just saying, like. I feel like some of these platforms are lagging behind in big ways, you know, uh, or it feels like it, or they've had, uh, they've been building these uh, platforms for 15, 20 years that it's, and, and it's very difficult to now build on top of that. So I'm not a developer, Matt, obviously you are, but uh, I'm sure you could talk more about that kind of stuff. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, obviously, 
social media does its thing um and social media tends to be more focused around the individual rather than a shared topic um a lot of what we see um in terms of benefits of of owning your own communities obviously you own your own data um you you are free to do with that as you please we we have a couple of brands that run their own analytics to sort of guide and, and help them make decisions um Obviously, there is a level of anonymity, which is a pro and a con. You know, it allows people to troll, but also allows people with health issues or, or, or um, in vulnerable groups to come online and, and talk about these things without having their, their their actual photo and Facebook history attached to that that conversation. Um, but in terms of lagging behind, that's a really curious um, conversation, actually. And I'd love to know what your thoughts are on that. Yeah, I think that um, so I'll just give you some very tactical answers, if that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. But, um, so, for example, on Facebook, you can type something in to say, um, hey, what's going on today? You know, did you guys run this whatever um, and highlight it in a nice big blue box and you get lots of engagement or way more engagement than just some letters. Does that make sense? Or or. When you look at, and I'm just going to talk about engagement, but also when you look at, uh, um, you know, like live. So, so if I wanted to do a live kind of chat with, um, uh, with Michael or with my community, all I do is put live or live video or whatever. Boom, it pops up into you know other people that are following uh, those people or people in the community. It sends a notification, hey, this person's live, and then they can join in. But you know, I think some of those, if it's cool features and you just, I, I think more social kinds of features uh, would allow more engagement. And, and you know, I, I think that um, you know, if you look at kind of, I've seen one platform do this is kind of this uh, auto, so out of outside of the uh, uh, social piece, but more of automation, um, you know, email automation and things like that, or more personalized experiences, you know, for people like me that's running the community. So if, if I want to get personalized and say, hey, these people that don't have photos, um, uh, send an email uh, to them, you know, uh, or this specific group, send an email to them saying they don't have a photo, add a photo, you know, it's, you can do those kinds of things. So a little off topic, topic, but those are some of the things that I'm talking about. I think it's difficult for some of the vendors to do that. Does that make sense? It makes perfect sense. I think... Um... I think really there's we're talking about two slightly but very much overlapping things. So, like the things that make sense to do when you're broadcasting about yourself is slightly different from trying to run a community at scale. Yeah. So, if we had, you know, you look at some communities, some brand communities um, have potentially, you know, say half a million members, it would become really chaotic if you gave everyone that sort of same footprint to talk about themselves as individuals that's true you know what what our platforms tend to do is much better with collaboration and discussing a shared topic i mean we have one brand community that deals with um, tv recaps so they will put up um the episode recap it and then everyone discusses the recap um, in that one contained area so you're kind of segmenting your audience into areas within the community Um, but if if everyone in, yeah, on social media, what you would do is have a hundred people talking about the same show, but slightly differently and in their own little footprint, which is a little bit, you know, less um, easy to digest as a conversation. So I think it's more conversational than more sort of broadcast, if that makes sense. So you're broadcasting a little less and having more of a conversation um, with kind of these platforms. You know that you bring up a very interesting point. You know, as I'm here, I'm listening because. Uh, you know, I've also had the chance to, you know, consult some, with some companies about how they engage with community, and and it's interesting. So here's, and I'm heard, I'm sure you've heard this a lot. Well, we just want to put the Facebook, and I love how they use the word the Facebook <laughs> internally. Can we do that? You know, and I just everything inside me goes ah, <laughs> the because answer. go on, sorry. I was going to say to finish it because I. And I think there's a bit of a generational piece. So that's a very interesting discussion point. And two, I think they want to solve it with technology first, right? And as I know, we're talking to someone who's been on the technology side for a while. But at some level, you kind of have to understand what you want to do and how do you want your company to collaborate with each other, right? This is kind of the beginning of that understanding. 
Your right, exactly. Yeah, I mean, what what we do if if we had that come through from um, a potential client, we would we would first just basically strip it back and go. Well, what are your goals? Forget the technology. Forget specific platforms. You know, what are your goals for this community? Um, and I think once you once you then start to walk through the goals, you'll realize that what you're asking for doesn't make sense for what you're trying to achieve. But you kind of latch onto the things you know. Yep. Um, you know, and there's a lot of nuance in that that answer. You know, and in, in, for some companies, an internal or Facebook do uh, their own team platform, don't they? Um, so that that might might make sense for for one client if their needs are fulfilled with that. Um, but you know, it may not be. Yeah, I agree. Uh, here's the other thing that's interesting. So, gener- because we were talking about generation, or well, at least I said generational gap. Mm. Um, if, maybe I'll turn it a little bit around and see kind of your thoughts around. Uh, Because the other questions we get around how do you begin to grow your community team, right? Because I think at some level, there's levels of consciousness that go on in a company, right? A, we recognize we need it. Two, we're going to do something about it. Three, let's talk to somebody about it. You know, you kind of have to go through those kind of steps uh, at some level. With your kind of your view, right? And your kind of, how do you see a company evolve through that, you know, what level do you come in? And then do you see, have you seen kind of successes or failures uh, as they have gone through these kind of journeys, uh, whether it's with your product or with others? I mean, you kind of see like, oh, this is, this is, they've been successful because they did this thing. They weren't because they didn't do this thing. I mean, I'm just kind of curious about your point or your thoughts there. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's, that's a great question. I think, um, yeah, I mean, taking it back, I've seen plenty of successes and plenty of failures um, over the the 18 years for sure. Um, And I think, yeah, I think some companies come to us um, and they want return on investment straight away. They want to see facts and figures to support the decision to launch a community. Mm. Others have different metrics to, to judge what is a success. Some of it's based on engagement or brand talk or, you know, deflection, support deflection. So again, it really depends on the client and their needs, and that's something we try and identify early on, um, to, so we know how to steer them. Um, but in terms of success and failure, again, each community is different, and I think at the beginning they're all fairly vulnerable. Um, but I think, in terms of good practices, onboarding and, and nurture, um, I think if you establish those things correctly early on, you, you've got a greater chance of success. Yeah, it's a very good point. Um... In fact, we spent time on both of those subjects. <laughs> yeah. Of, of, yeah. As, you know, this idea of how onboarding is so important and getting your getting your uh, you know your first community members uh, to post and to engage and that kind of make them feel at home and kind of if you spent time up front there, you're going to be successful in the long haul uh, in your community. I think this um, ties into the, I love the term generational gap because I'm certainly old enough to see it. Um, yeah. I think that's a, that's a, that is probably the key difference between communities of the past and communities of where we are now in the future. I mean, I remember back in the early days, if if I was allowed into a community and got a comment off the forum administrator, you know, it, it made my day, you know, I felt like I was someone, right? So that there, <laughs> there was there was a real sense of privilege just being allowed in to talk. Whereas now we've pretty much flipped it that we do a lot more nurturing, a lot more reaching out, you know, um, you know that that we want we want to welcome people and we feel grateful for them coming to us um so it is a, a huge mind mindset shift um in terms of how communities have developed over the years oh that's interesting i, I think you're right uh yes because i remember i i too am uh i can also associate to the generational uh mm. gap as well myself and I, I i agree i remember when i first started on the community side i had to do a there was a lot of oh are you really you know the the guy who runs the community, oh, yeah. you know, that kind of like, whoa, hey, you know, <laughs> how did I get this uh, special privilege? Um, and now you're right. I think I spend a lot more time uh, reaching out, uh, almost pulling teeth, you know, hey, oh. come on in, you know, let's, yeah. you know, get back into the community and re-engage at some level. Um, you know, I, I want to pull back a little bit on some thoughts going back onto the evolution of community inside a company. Uh, one of the you know, one of the folks that we talk to a lot are around individuals in a company who see it and believe that this is a strategy they have in their company, but are not in a, 
a position to to push it. This sounds kind of weird, but it it kind of it's a bottoms up strategy as opposed to mm-hmm. a tops down perspective, right? So it's almost like there's two ways for a company to evolve in the evolution. One is a and the you in the lovely way is when they're both in sync, right? But uh, are have you seen or have you have? And this may be a difficult question to answer, but uh, any tips for those who are trying to, from a bottoms up, get their company to realize this is something they need? And one of the areas we have focused on is around, as, as you're right, is around the metrics piece, right? Because companies tend to believe or answer things in terms of top line revenue. But uh, I don't know if you've seen any other tactics that kind of help people in the bottoms up perspective, getting a company to realize that community is a place they need to go uh, drive. Have you got a question on sports? No, I think. Um... <laughs> <laughs> well, we could talk about football. What's your favorite football? Uh... I was, uh, sports have been cancelled is a bad subject. Okay. Oh, that is that is true. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean that's a great question. I think really uh, the thing we always advise if if you're looking from bottom up is to try and get all the stakeholders involved at the very very beginning, and kind of try and guide them into a place where they have some patience um, because it's not something that's going to return and on that investment in the short term. Um, So I think you need to have a lot of patience, involve the stakeholders and kind of identify some short term goals in terms of membership or or metrics, but also some longer term goals in terms of brand awareness and deflection or, you know, containment. Because one of the big advantages of having your own community is that you also, you host the good and the bad and you've got a greater opportunity to, to, um, to answer the, any negative uh, criticism on your products or services before it spirals or ends up on yep. social media. So I want to agree. Yep. Yeah. So, I mean, all those kind of things, if you can involve stakeholders early on in the design um, part and, and kind of get them on board with your way of thinking that it's going to take a little while to get it up uh, and it's going to be a lot of effort, but it's going to be worth it in the long run. Um, I think that probably works more often than not, but of course it, it does rely on the stakeholders having an interest at that level because they generally don't, they generally want to just come in when it's, it's success or, or they want metrics to prove that it's all working. Yeah. And it, it, this is also making the assumption that there's a need that they're seeing and that they're using this as a way to combat that need. Uh, and I agree. One of the things we uh, we preach a lot on is the idea that community is not a overnight success. It is a investment you make to, to, you know, add to the value brand of your to the value of your brand over the long haul right and it's a uh, when done right it, it can be quite impressive right and and, and, and yeah, I, Michael, agree with I remember i remember when we were at rexel um you know the first year that i was there all we really focused on were two two things as in you know what we would communicate to um you know our leaders and things like that was registrations and like page views. That was really all our goal was. Um, but we knew that we would have to design over time metrics that you know are um, you know leading people to e-commerce sites and, and leading people to buy more product and all these kinds of things. And we did start designing that, uh, but that took I don't know a year and a half to even start thinking about that. And it was hard. <laughs> it was really hard, but yeah. it was really cool when we did it. Yeah, I mean, I think. Um, sorry, I was, I was, I was just thinking. Just oh, off that. I think. Um, yeah, I mean, I think when you start to track me- um, conversions as a metric, that's a very powerful way to demonstrate um, success. So, if you can demonstrate that you're converting, you know, casual visitors into into super users or, or, or regular posters, and again, you can convert those super users into regular posters into um, to buyers. You know, once you can start looking at those conversions, I think that's when. I think that's when you can start to sort of measure a success for people that do love metrics to guide them. Mm. So, and I guess my, sorry, Michael, but my point also was to say that the time it takes, like you guys were saying is you can't build it overnight. And so to kind of talk to these leaders, you got to kind of continue to tell them, Hey, look, you know, that, you know, people will start engaging, people will start doing this. And our goal at the end of the day is, is, um, case deflection or re- getting people to renew it at a higher rate or, you know, uh, getting people to buy more, you know, of that product. But, you know, that, that could, depends on the organization too, right? Like what if the organization has, you know, three or four Salesforce instances and five, four, three or four different case management systems. And there's a big effort going on in consolidation and that will take time for the organization to do it and for the community to connect, um, technology the technologies together to start getting that information now you could build 
BI dashboard or you know dashboards to help you get some of that, but you have to have somebody to be able to do it. So that's tough, right? It is tough. I mean, yeah, it is tough. And I think that's where we're very clear with every you know potential clients at the beginning. You know, we're not going to wave a magic wand and you're going to have a million yeah. a million people talking about your product on your site. It's, it is it is tough. It takes work, but it is like you said, it is an investment you you really have to make. Because you know, if you're if they're not talking about your products or, or or whatever services you offer on your own site, they're going to be they're going to be talking about them somewhere else. Well, and that's funny that you say that. Is when I first started in Perva, you know, we didn't have you know a community at all, uh, but a little over a year and a few months. And the first thing I said was, people are talking about us already. Mm. And, and so I went to uh, three or four different community sites, you know, security community sites. Um, some others and i just showed you know i said this is what people are saying some people are saying some bad things some people are saying some really good things and some people are uh actually recommending our product to others mm. so how cool would that be if we get all the google juice and all the recommendations here and you know we if we can bring people to us and to our site um just from google you know that's a big win if we aren't on google not to get off, but if we aren't on the first page of Google when somebody asks us or asks a particular product question or ask about our product, then we lose. Yeah, you know? absolutely. If somebody else is there, then you know, uh, then they win. Absolutely, we don't. and obviously, um, obviously, Facebook's a walled garden, so that doesn't often appear in search results. So, in terms of SEO, owning yeah. your own community is, is is kind of key there. And I think you can, yeah, I mean, I think that's a great it's a great way of putting it that. That they're going to be talking about you, so you may as well have them talking about them to, about your products on your own site. And also, you can take it further. You know, you, we have tools where we can we track searches and keywords and things like that. So you can start to kind of get an idea of what your customers are thinking, um, what where gaps are in your knowledge base, um, where gaps are in your own market. You know, they might come to your site because you you sell a product, and and they're they're wondering, they're curious if it can also solve. Z problem that you may not have considered. So you can start to use all that data to make some really informed decisions about, you know, the the sort of the trajectory of your own business. That's a really, I know we're coming close to the end of our time. Um, well, we've got 30 minutes. Yeah. we. Well, I mean, it's been 32, right? Or you want to do yeah, another yeah, one? Yeah. 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 I mean, I'm open to if Matt is. Yeah. I'm, I'm, put an hour on there. So. I'm happy to, I'm happy to keep going. Perfect. All right. Well, well, because the other, uh, well, because the other thing I want to discuss is analytics. <laughs> no, no, that's a good one. No, no, uh, sorry, uh, I've got another call scheduled. No, go on. Then. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at the exactly. Time. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. I don't have time. So. No, because the the you know the other places uh, that I want to go into is uh, uh, your product, right? Uh, because. Uh, we, we have a yeah. I, I'm personally interested in myself. Like in my in my view, I almost want to would love to see a demo and kind of go because we are asked all the time about what well, hey what uh, what you've seen out there and and just kind of working through your site. I actually love the way you're you you even start talking about the type of community you want. Right? Is it is it charity? Is it community? You know, I mean, uh, 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 you know, evangelizing if you will uh, the types of uh, community types that you're looking for. Uh, so before we get into analytics, I mean, tell, tell I mean, tell us about uh, you, you know your product and what is its where your value is or where like kind of how you fit in the niche of some of the other uh, uh, community uh, platforms. Right, it's, it's a good question. It's like the elevator pitch. <laughs> I mean, obviously, <laughs> the, what is your elevator pitch? Well, how, how many floors have we got? Because this could take a while. <laughs> uh, that's, that's all right. We're social distancing, so we can go for a while. Uh, I've been. I've been, I've been <laughs> I've been in the Empire State Building, and that takes a long time to get to the top. So yeah, it does. <laughs> um, well, okay. Well, I mean, obviously, there's uh, there's a lot of competition in in uh, this market, um, and there's a lot of overlap. Um, but I think if I had to pick one thing, is that we like to become a true partner with our clients. Um, so with Squarespace, we have like monthly calls, monthly strategy calls, where they tell us, you know if they need have any additional needs you know um some questions and stuff like that which is really really useful for us because that kind of feedback is is gold um but you know we we see as as being a partner and kind of helping to support those brands on their journey um 
you know, we don't just onboard, we don't just do the sales pitch, we don't just do the onboarding. And then once we cash the check, we go quiet. We, we're really keen to sort of keep involved in, in their journey and offer our guidance and support when we can. Um, you know, we have a lot of different communities, you know, as you've seen from our site, we, we've got sort of fan base communities. You know, we, I talked about the sort of the site for TV shows. We have sports teams, which um, used to challenge us back in the days before cloud computing, uh, trying to keep them online when uh, their team was mm. playing. <laughs> Mm. used to get a little frenzy of activity so uh, yeah we'll have a couple of spare servers standing by um right the way through to um you know support uh in like squarespace um lego uh, is an interesting uh, case uh, we have a community that brings all their real world brick building communities together um under one website so yeah really we we do service a, a kind of diverse market um and we love digging in to learn more about their business and how community can be a positive thing for them and then we stick with it for the for the duration how did you um so I, I know uh and i agree with you this at the kind of large scale community platforms uh no offense to them i'm not going to mention any names just <laughs> they're very good at, you know, kind of coming in and, you know, doing their thing and then leaving, right? Uh, uh, and I think one of the things we preach about often is about building it is not the hard part. It's the, it's, you know, once you get it launched, that's the hard part, right? That's the, you know, getting you off the ground, launching, getting people engaged. And that's, uh, it's not a normal thing, right? You kind of have to make that transition. You do, and you'll never get- And before he, before you go, Matt, uh, I, I slightly disagree with Michael because I think that building it is hard, but it's not the hardest part. Mm. <laughs> so, and maybe to Michael, it's easy because he's done so many, but <laughs> fair, um, fair, fair. But, uh, you know, for me, it's, it's, uh, it's a fairly difficult thing, more so if, it, if you're doing it by yourself. Right. Uh, but I, I completely agree with you, Matt. And, and even what Michael said is, you know, uh, some vendors will just leave and, and not come back. But now I think if you're not, uh, as a vendor, if you're not uh, there throughout, like, you know, having these monthly calls, weekly calls, whatever, and building relationships even for you uh, to the customer, uh, then I think you lose too, right? I mean, I just think, I think that he's exactly right. Well, we have to, like, we, as we tell clients today, we want you to be successful because if you're not if you're not successful then we're not successful it's that it's you know it's it's a relationship it's not it's not a software it's not a platform it's a relationship um you know we um we're dealing with uh, a client uh, right now actually that's trying to get a community off the ground and um it's you know it's hard work and they they acknowledge that and they're up for the challenge um and one thing we say is you probably won't get it right the first time you know you know you'll come to us with yeah. a with a spec and we'll build it and you know we'll offer our advice and insight and so on but until it's out there in the wild and you get real life feedback and you look at the stats and think well you know that's not working then we have yeah. to go back and tweak and change and that's where you need a partner that's where you need someone that's willing to do that um and not just leave you to it on your own because it, it, you know it's hard enough creating a community but it's harder when you're doing it on your own and you and especially if you've never done it before it's a, such a good point uh, because I think that, you know, when you build it and if you don't have lots of feedback and even if you do have feedback, you, you don't know exactly what that's what the community is going to turn into, you know, six months, eight months, 12, a year and a half down the road. And you constantly need to make changes, whether it's to uh, the UI, UX, or, you know, do you bring in more um, uh, communities within that community, et cetera. So. Michael, go ahead. Sorry. Uh, no, 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 no. I I was going to mention something, and I, my brain started going into another <laughs> area because <I'm, laughs> because part of me is also thinking about uh, employee focused communities. Right. Uh, another thing that we hear a lot is about. Uh, I used to use this phrase called "You have to eat your own dog food." Oh yeah. Um, yeah which is this idea of. Uh, so the other thing I we also talk a lot about is this idea of a digital transformation, right? And some of these activities are kind of shrouded by or at least part of a larger digital transformation of the company and about moving a, co a company from a more face-to-face, one-by-one, uh, -one, and into a more collaborative, digitally focused, digitally engaging company, right? Which means sometimes as a community strategy, they start with employees first, 
right? Kind of like get them on the board, make them feel comfortable. And then that's a natural progression at a face-to-face customer perspective level. Uh, just curious how you've seen some of your engagements with employee focused communities and, uh, you know, are there any tips for those who are kind of getting started in that arena to understand what they should be asking a company first themselves, right? Their own company before engaging. Yeah, I mean, we we obviously our own dog food. We have um, a public facing community, um, <laughs> and we have we. Have such I love a, dog food. It's such a great term. It just makes me mentally convulsed every time I hear it. Yeah, you, you throw up a little bit in your mouth, right? <laughs> yeah, every time. Every time. <laughs> um, oh my god! So <laughs> this is descending. Uh, we do, we do. Um, yeah, we have a public facing community, and we also have a um, an employee only community. And what we tend to do, we use Slack. Slack's a fantastic tool for day-to-day communication. Uh, but what we tend to do is use our offline community um, as kind of like a silo for for feedback and for development plans and anything you want to kind of formalize and remember. Um, so that's a great strength of using it as an internal community. But I think, again, just like launching any community, you want to get stakeholders involved in, you know, in, in terms of an employee-focused community. That's going to be the employees. And you're going to want to do some research on on pain points for them with the current setup and how you know this new platform could make that easier. And you really use that to guide you, um, guide you when you're setting up and making those very first initial decisions. Yeah, so that's a good question. We talk about stakeholders, uh, and they are different from you know customer facing versus internal facing. Mm. Are there certain titles or maybe uh, uh, disciplines within a company that folks should start kind of putting together? I think it really depends on the company. I mean, it's it, it's really hard to get into from an abstract point of view. Um, oh, fair point. Yeah. So I think like things like, for example, in my past, it's been around HR, right? Someone in legal. Uh, right. uh, uh, it's always somebody in legal, whether <laughs> no matter what community it is. <laughs> yeah. So, and, and then like in Europe, you have GDPR problems. So you have that other yeah, exactly. kind of yeah. mix. <laughs> uh, that also made me throw up a little bit in my mouth too. Yeah, uh, we we have the cookie banner that solved all our problems. I feel yeah, much safer. I, I feel yeah, much safer. <laughs> yeah, I feel safer too. <laughs> and in and in uh, okay. and in Germany, we had to do a, even a little step further and let people know that they're about to post something on another server oh, inside. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, love the Germans. But anyway, that being set aside. Um, you know, I'm thinking things like you know, legal, HR, uh, someone business facing. You know, um, uh, IT uh, will be part of that process. Uh, you know, like those folks come to to head. I don't know if there are others in your mind that. Uh, and it's, it's it's funny. I not to. And I'll, I'll I'll be quiet, but it's not like it's this grand meeting you're having. It's more about how do you start aligning those individuals so that you start to have the grand meeting or, or at least get into that process. Right. Um, anyway, I don't know if you had any of your, any roles that you thought uh, were successful or should be into those kind of beginning discussions in, in employee focused communities. Yeah. I think you, you're going to want leaders across all, all levels really involved in that discussion. Um, and it, it, again, it depends on what type of community and who it serves. I mean, you know, is it a, is it a community that is for all employees, you know, your development, your, your marketing, your sales, is it a sales community, you know, and and what benefit can that bring in terms of silos mm. and stuff like that? So, yeah, I, I, I don't think there's a really a fixed answer to that. I just think you're going to want to get super, super engaged people, really, that within your team um, that can articulate feedback, which is always key because some people know what they like and know what they don't like, but they can't really articulate that. So, you know, you could get leaders from all, all different levels, from the C-suite and whatever other levels are in your organization. Or you could really look at individuals and find, you know, sort of dig up, dig through and see who's who's got good insight, good articulation. Um, you know, particularly back to the classic super user, really, you know, trying to identify your super users. Yeah, which is one thing we talk about, too, uh, is just, you know, find your super user. <laughs> yeah, I think- Someone who's the evangelizer, right? Someone has got to, you know, pick up the baton, if you will. Yeah, absolutely. And you need those. You need to do as many as you can, as quickly as you can, because it makes things a whole lot easier. Yeah, I agree. I think in some level, maybe that's how we slipped into it, right? Because uh, I remember back when it first started, that was me, right? When I was like, yeah, yeah. this is this is a great idea. Oh, you know, sign me up. Yeah, I tend to get super involved in the in the communities I belong to. And, I, you know, I get I get super invested. Yeah, it, it comes down to this idea of our own personal journeys, right? The It's something we enjoy, right? And, mm-hmm. and we get a kick out of watching it just almost organically grow by itself and just, you know, just the chit chat that you can have internally. And then at least for me personally, uh, 
you know, and I, I've said this to Chris often is that I really enjoy it when I see, you know, it's not, not just, you know, your, your own customers, right. Having trouble with the products that they're using. And then you touch them to somebody who can help them and the thanks they come in. Hey, thank you very much. You know, I couldn't figure this out without you guys. And it's like, Oh, wow. That's magic. You know? And every time that happens, Michael, I post it on Slack. I put, I send emails to people within the organization saying, see, this stuff works. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think so. you, I think you've got a great point. Along, we encourage our clients as well that you know metrics are fantastic and they should be there to guide strategic decisions. But also, and this goes out to community managers who already know this. You know, do not underestimate the power of a testimonial. You know, take those, take those, take that feedback, those screenshots, that they, those paragraphs and sentences, compile them in a file, and then show them to people, the stakeholders, and say this is also evidence of what we're doing here. It's not about the numbers; it's about the people, uh, and you know what, how we can impact them. Yeah, I think that uh, you know it's it's not to get off of kind of the internal community, but part of it is you know for my community and the things that I've done and other communities as well is is the employee participation. So even in uh, a support community or marketing, whatever you want to call it, um, I think it's important to recognize employees mm -hmm. uh, to say, hey, thanks so much, Ira, or thanks so much, so and so for um, you know, for helping this customer. So I won't just go to that person. I will post that stuff on Slack and in and, and the Perva channel and the community and Perva channel, you know, wherever I can to promote that person, helping me do a good job. And I'll do it often because, you know, people like to be recognized, you know, and, and they're doing it in my mind out of the, uh, kindness of their heart because they have a full-time job, Yeah, you know, no, I, and it's not that. Right. No, so. Absolutely. And uh, this came up uh, in CMX actually recently. I can't remember the name of the company that, um, that did this, but they, they send out a newsletter for their employee led community, which highlights those things, you know, customer success, you know, uh, you know, people that put in, put in extra work, stuff like that, you know, and, and also they shared a bunch of stats as well in terms of deflection and things like that, which is, I think is also interesting to look at um, as a company. Uh, and and well, of course, yeah. yeah. Makes complete sense. Well, Matt, I uh, I have to say I have been really enjoying our our chat. Uh, I, I want to personally thank you for the time you're spending with us, uh, uh, and just kind of giving your insights. It just you know, just I've learned some new stuff, and even just just kind of uh, talking with somebody who's uh, been in the same kind of uh, trench, if you will, is is quite refreshing. Mm -hmm. I really appreciate it very much. Oh no, thank yeah, you. it's been great. Thank you very much uh, for having me. So, Matt, we'll have this on our site as well. But could you tell everybody how to get a hold of you or you know, set up a demo or where we can, you know, if they're interested in learning more about, uh, about Envision community, how can they, uh, how can they find you? In view, uh, I messed it up. Like my one golden moment to pitch my business. I messed it up. <laughs> <laughs> sales, are, sales are going to be furious. Um, it's, <laughs> it's, uh, Envision community and it's, it's, it's spelled deliberately incorrectly. So it's I N V I S I O N community.com. Uh, we're also on Twitter and Facebook with the same. That's excellent. We'll we'll also have a link out to uh, your place as well. And uh, I just wanted to thank. You. But before we go, but what? Because he's, I have to ask, who is your favorite FC? My favorite FC? Yeah, your football team. Oh, okay. Well, we're talking. We talk in American. Oh football. yeah, we're talking. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. There's only one type of football, and uh, well, it's, it's, it's American football. <laughs> it's, it's, it's kind of hand egg. It's not really. Uh, I don't know who's popular. Are we talking? Oh, we I don't know. I'm assuming. I'm assuming you may because you said you said from up in the Cambridge area, you're going to be like say you know Cambridge City or something like that. But I'm not too sure. No, they're League Two. No one supports Cambridge. Yeah, they're League actually, Two exactly. Yeah, I, I live just north of Cambridge, and uh, they're our rival. So um, I definitely want to. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm going to go. With, I'm going to go with Liverpool. Um, I'm not a big. I'm not a big uh, football fan, but my son is, so I do kind of watch just so we have a shared interest. Um, oh yeah, of course. So, but if they if they get to finish the season because it's all been cancelled, so who knows? Yeah, it has been. Yes, and I hear. A lot, I trust me. I have a lot of friends who are very uh, big football fans, and they're just they're lamenting. Uh, you know. Well, sports sports bring people together. It's a it's a community, you know. And I think once that's taken away, everyone's like, well, now what do we do with Saturday? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Correct. I Netflix, guess we'll Netflix and in, everybody's Netflix and in chilling, right? Yeah. So. Well, I don't know. It's not much chilling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We'll, we'll see what happens in nine months. 
We'll be fine. Yeah, exactly. yeah we'll, do a re- <laughs> we'll, we'll do a reunion podcast and talk about the last nine months. <laughs> yeah, yeah let's do it. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> well, gents, I, I really appreciate it. Uh, you know, thank you very much, Matt and uh, Chris. We'll uh, we'll talk again. And thank you very much uh, once again. Uh, my name is Michael Sandoval, and I'm Chris Detzel. Uh, thank you guys very much, and we'll talk to you next time. Cheers. Thank, thanks, guys. Bye bye.